all in. What's up, everybody? Another day, another cash game session here in Resorts World. I would say that out of those 40 days that I was in Vegas, I played at least half of the times in this poker room. And there is one thing that I never said here, and is that I like to spend my money in places I feel they deserve my money. And honestly, Resorts World deserves your money. They really treat you with a lot of respect and kindness, while that's not the same thing that happens in other casinos. Just as an example for you guys, this coffee machine is inside the poker room, and you can just go there and choose whatever type of coffee you want and those are little things that makes all the difference for me when I choose which places I'm gonna be a customer. I spend money in Resource World with great pleasure and all I'm saying here is just the truth. Welcome to the Poker Profit channel, the first poker vlog created to help you become a better poker player. I'm gonna play 1-3 today, right now it's a Tuesday afternoon, I buy in for 400 in the 1-3 game. First hand, I'm in the low jack with 10-8 suited, two limpers before me, I raise to 16, I won't mind either if they call or fold with this hand. One of the limpers call, so we go heads up to the flop. Flop is great, 10-9-8 rainbow. He checks to me, there are many straight possibilities in this board, so there's no way I'm gonna check back. I bet 22, around 50% of the pot. He folds and we win the first hand. Next hand, I'm in the button with queen jack suited, low jack raises 12, one caller, and as at least some of you guys know, I like to build a loose image for myself in the beginning of every table I play. So while at least half of the times I'm gonna flat with Queen Jack suited, because I'm in the beginning of my session in this table, I rather three betting in position and Queen Jack is a great hand to do that. Also because if an ace or a king comes in the board, oftentimes this guy will favor way more my range than the other guys. So there are great reasons for me to three bet and that's what I do. I three bet to $50, they all fold and I win the second hand. I changed seat to get a better table footage, winning $26 for now. Next thing, I'm in the hijack with 10 jack offsuit, one limper before me. This is a new table, so again, I wanna build a loose image for myself. I raise to 15 in position. There are gonna be many times that I'm gonna just open fold this hand in this particular spot. But if I join this hand, I'm gonna join by raising. Cause I believe playing tight, aggressive is the best way for you to have the biggest win rate you can. Limper calls, we go heads up to the flop. Flop comes queen, 10, six, rainbow. I got middle pair with a decent kicker. He checks to me, I believe most of the times I'll be winning this hand. So I'm gonna see bet, mostly to protect my equity. He calls, he has only 43 left in his stack. So SPR is pretty small. Turns another 10, he checks to me again. And I decide to give him a shot to bluff. So I check back, river is a blank, a five of clubs. He checks again, and I'm gonna put him all in. He folds and I win the hand. Next hand, I'm in the low jack with pocket queens. I raise to 12, playing my left calls, button, small blind, and big blind calls as well. So five players see the flop. The flop comes 10 for deuce with two spades. Great flop for my hand. I'm losing mostly two sets. They check to me and I see bet 35, little less than two thirds of the pot. Only hijack calls. We go heads up to the turn. Turns a pretty bad and interesting one. A king of spades. Now there is a overcard to my queens, but I am semi nut flush draw. I decide to check and possibly call for any bet he does. When I check, he quickly shoves all in. This quick shove is pretty weird, to be honest. I feel like if he was with a flush already, he would at least take a little longer to shove. But that's just a guess. Many times in live poker, you have to work with assumptions. And the better are your assumptions. The closest you will be to the right decision. I gotta call 133 for a pot that has 263. For this call to be profitable, my average equity has to be around 33%. If I'm playing, for example, for the flush and for the queen, we're talking about 22% equity, which is less than the 33 I need. But if I'm playing versus a ace of spades hand, he's the one who would have 22%. And then my call would be highly profitable. I don't know nothing about this guy. I just arrived to this table. So after considering my options, putting into account that I also want to get a showdown from him, I decide to call. He quickly shows king three offsuit. I really don't know what he was thinking when he called the flop. I do appreciate the call though. I mean, now he got lucky and hit the only three outs he had in the turn, but it happens. Those are the type of players you want at your table. Unfortunately for him, the ace of spades came and I made a flush, but if I lost as well, I would be fine with that because what really matters to me are the quality of my decisions and the quality of the other player's decisions as well. I'm not the type of player who has a big ego and wants to play against the best players in the world to make money. I mean, 
If I play against those players, it would be totally interesting. But for money, it's way better to play against a guy like that than against a guy who is balanced and know what he's doing. And I believe this is something you guys should keep in mind as well. It doesn't matter your level of poker, you still wanna play against worse players than you. And the bigger the edge, the better. One hour and 20 minutes of game, winning $277. Next hand I get A6 suited from the button, low jack limps. I decide to limp, I'm usually gonna raise here, but A6 is a great hand to disguise the strength of my hand by limping preflop. And in case small blind or big blind decides to raise, I'm totally gonna call and play in position against them with a hand that is totally possible to have the nuts in the following streets or be a great bluff catcher. So I limp, small blind completes, big blind checks, four players see the flop. The flop is a great one, ace, deuce, deuce. I got top pair with an average kicker. They check to me and I decide to check back. Turns a three of spades, pretty much a blank. Low jack bets eight and I'm gonna call here. We go heads up to the river. River is a queen of spades, flush draw doesn't get there. Low jack checks and the way I played, now I'm gonna bet for value. There is a relevant chance we're chopping this hand, but I'm still gonna bet. I bet $15. Lojack calls. I guess we're chopping. No? He says it's good and we win the hand. Next hand, I'm in the cutoff with King Queen suited, two limpers before me. I raise to 12. I choose to go with a smaller sizing because I want the hands that I'm dominate to remain in the hand, such as King Jack, King 10, King 9, Queen 9, Queen 10, Queen Jack, Queen 8. Even queen seven suited, king seven suited. I don't want to scare those hands away. And king queen suited develops pretty well post flop. So I raise 12, only under the gun calls. We go heads up to the flop, which is a pretty good one. I got two overs and a flush draw. He checks to me and I'm going to get aggressive here. I'm flipping against many things, but I have a lot of potential to hit a great hand in the turning river. I bet 16, under the gun calls. He is that guy with a suit in the other side of the table. He seems to be successful and somewhat unattached. To money. I miss the turn, but I get some extra equity because now the 10 makes me have a straight. He checks to me and I don't feel I'm gonna make him fold too often. So instead of barreling again, I decide to check back. River is an ace, great card for my range. I would totally play ace king, ace queen, ace 10 like that. He checks to me again and right in this moment, I just didn't feel it was a good time to try to bluff this guy. And in some spots, your gut is gonna tell you one thing, and the theory is gonna tell you another. And I'm a guy that I usually trust my gut. Sometimes I will be wrong, okay. But if I get to be right most of the times, I'm happy with it. I decide to check back and he shows ace nine offsuit, having two pair and he wins the hand. Nice check, man. I will usually bet, I swear. I just felt like it wasn't the time. Next hand, I'm in the small blind with ace jack suited, high jack open raises to 20, he's the same guy from last hand, and here I just didn't feel it was a good moment to join this hand. There are gonna be some times that I'm ahead of him, but there are also gonna be many times I'm behind. Also many times I'm flipping, and I'm playing out of position from the small blind, worst position in this table, and I decide to open fold. Some of you will think this is a crime, I already know that, but that's how I play, that's what I think. And I believe that losing a dollar in a situation that is not that advantageous is okay. And yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comments. Next hand, I'm in the button with four deuce suited, one limper, hijack raises 15. And I decide to get tricky here and three bet my four deuce suited. It will be rare the times I'm gonna do that with this particular hand, but sometimes I will. I decide to re-raise to $42. But then something really bad happens. Small blind decides to call. And I believe his range will be pretty strong. Full of pocket pairs and some king queen, king jack. Maybe even ace queen, ace king, ace jack. So I got a red flag. Flop comes 10, 9, 7 rainbow. That's not a good board for my range. And my hand is awful. So when he checks to me, I decide to check back. I gain some equity in the turn. Now I have a flush draw at least. He checks to me again. And while I could decide to bet, I don't think I make any pocket pair fold for one bet, so I decide to check back again. River is a 3, he checks to me again, and I have the single worst holding possible in this board. 4 high. So when he checks to me, I decide to try to bluff. The pot has $105, I decide to bet 32 to win 105 for this bluff to be good. It has to go through around 30% of the times to be profitable. He thinks for a while and decides to fold. Guess my turn. He bluffed someone in another hand and that's why I said that. But honestly, I don't even think I should have shown. And that was a mistake. It would be way better not to show. And we go to the next hand. Next hand, I'm in the middle position with ace-king suited. I raise to 15 and low jack 
Snap calls. Cutoff re raises to $55. I don't know much about how good Cutoff is, but if he is a good player, he will know that Low Jack's range is pretty wide, so he could totally be exploiting us by 3 betting in position. And I have Ace King suited, which is a great hand, so there's no way I'm just gonna call here, and I'm totally gonna 3 bet. The question is how much? I could decide to shove, but that would represent a lot of strength, especially because Low Jack has more than $500 in his stack by my side. So I decided to go with a 4 bet of 155. He quickly shoves all in. I call. I don't have aces or kings. Call. The board is terrible. He shows a set of jacks and he wins the hand. Jack. I buy him for $25 more, losing $41. Next hand I'm in the button, hijack raises 10, I see ace queen offsuit from the button, I re-raise $33, she calls, hijack is a woman that seems to be pretty wise, I played with her a couple times already. The flop comes ace, queen, deuce, all spades, most likely I'm winning this hand, she texts to me and I'm gonna bet, I bet 25, she calls, turns a blank, a four of hearts, she checks again, and now I'm gonna bet again. Do you play like 300? Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I bet $76. She calls again, and now there's a really important question I'm asking myself. Would she do that with a flush already? River is a 7, she checks again, and honestly, when I bet 76 looking at her, and the way she calls, I don't think so. And I really do believe I can extract a lot of value from her with hands such as Ace X. She has many of those Ace X in her range, raising 10 and then calling a 3 bet, especially the ones that are suited. So when she checks to me, I'm gonna try to extract maximum value here. In case she's low played with a flush, congrats, she's gonna get my money, but I really don't think so. All in. I go all in for $220. Up to. She calls, she shows ace, deuce, suited. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember one hand that we played? It was king versus kings. Yes, my plus yeah. So we're fair. We're fair now. <laughs> Pretty big cooler. If I was in her shoes, I would probably check raise flop already. But check calling the three streets is okay as well, especially if she thinks I bluff a lot, which honestly I don't think it's the case. Oftentimes I turn it off in the river and I win the hand. Two hours and 20 minutes of game, winning $300 for now. Next hand I'm in the hijack with pocket kings. I raise to 12, only big blind call, we go heads up to the flop. Flop comes queen, jack, nine with two hearts. Not the best flop for kings, but definitely not the worst as well. He checks to me, most of the times I'll be winning here, so I'm gonna bet to protect my equity. I see bet $15, he calls, turns a deuce of spades, now there are two flush draws in the board. He checks to me again, and here I believe I rather betting than just checking back. But the problem with betting is if this guy decides to check raise many bluffs, I'm gonna be in a really tough spot. So in this particular hand, I decided to check back, which is okay as well, but I still rather a little bit more betting. River comes a six of diamonds, he checks again, and now of course I'm gonna bet for value. I bet $40, he thinks for a long time. Decides to fold and I win the hand. Next hand I'm in the big blind, with three deuce suited, two limpers, I check, flop comes 774 rainbow, I check, everybody checks back, turns a 5, now I gotta open ended, but the 6 would give me a lower straight, I check again, button bats 10, and here, I don't feel like button is gonna be strong that often, and there are many 7s in my range, including full houses as well, like I can have all of the low cards check it from the big blind. So I decide to check raise to 30, and in case he calls, most likely I'm gonna bet big on the river, representing full houses or trips. But he folds and I win the hand. And that's a problem you have with betting to protect your equity against players 
that have a balance check raising range. For example, I say a lot here, I'm gonna bet to protect my equity. But in the 1-3 game, players are way more passive than they should, while it's not my case. For example, I'm check raising those 3 suited in this spot, while I'm pretty sure that 90% of the field or more is gonna just call and hope to see a 6 or an ace in the river. I changed seats, I do apply table selection on my strategy and I just felt it was the moment to change it and that's why I did it. First hand in this table I get pocket 7s from the big blind, hijack, cutoff and button limp, small blind folds and here I'm definitely gonna raise, especially cause I just arrived at this table and I wanna build a loose image for myself and I believe 7s is ahead of their average range. And in spots like that I usually raise twice the size of the pot. I can go either a little bigger than that or smaller depending on how fragile is my hand and how often players are gonna call me. This time I raised 28, little more than twice the size of the pot. Hijack calls. Hijack is a pretty nice woman who's been pretty friendly to me. All this table is really friendly and that's usually a great sign. Flop comes Jack, 9, Deuce with two hearts. I have the seven of hearts. I'm gonna bet this flop to protect my equity over hands that I'm beating. I believe I should bet a little bigger than 21 because I'm not gonna bet in the turn most likely. So if I want her to fold, I believe it's better to bet bigger and give her worse odds than what I'm giving her right now betting one third. She calls, turns a deuce, I check and she checks back. River is another deuce, I check again and she quickly shoves all in for $56. I gotta call 56 for a pot that has 161. For this call to be profitable, I gotta be right around 20 to 25% of the times. And honestly, the only hands I'm beating are flush draws that missed it and straight draws that missed it as well and decided to bluff. Which I honestly don't know how often will she transform her flush draws or straight draws into a bluff. You're gonna make the vlog. Maybe. Uh, Most likely. No, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. No, it's fine. Don't worry. I, mean <laughs> I have a full house. I do have a full hug. Oh yeah? Oh my god. Please don't lie to me. I won't lie to you. This is not poker, right? I, I won't lie to you. Oh my god. This already happened, you know? Like... Oh my god. Send money when you put it in your blog. Send money. That's my name. Send money. Send money. C-Y-N-T-M-O-N-E-Y. Send money. Okay, I'll believe you, but this already happened. The, the woman said she, ha she had it, I, I fought it, and she didn't have it, you know? You. She lied. Bluffing is different call than call lying. Call 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 call. I, I, I don't think down. bluffing and lying are the same thing. I'm show. Oh my god. I had sevens. I had sevens. I fold and she shows a jack. She wanted to be in the vlog, and there she is. And it was great playing with you, Synth Money. Next hand, I get pocket tens. Two limpers before me, this table seems to be great, I raise to 17, I go a little bit on the larger size because I believe they're gonna call me pretty often and I wanna extract as much value as I can pre-flop. Both limpers call, three players see the flop, flop comes king 5 deuce with two spades, I don't have the 10 of spades. They check to me and I'm gonna bet to protect my equity, most of the times I'm gonna still be winning here with pocket 10s, only under the gun plus 1 calls. We go heads up to the turn. Turn's a really bad one for my hand. Not the worst for my range though. He checks to me and I could decide to transform my hand into a bluff. But I'd rather just checking back and see a river. River is horrible. Now any spades has a flush. He checks to me. I decide to check back. He mucks. Okay, I'm gonna be nice. I was gonna muck as well. I always try to be nice at the table, so when he asks for me to show, I'm gonna do so. And by a miracle, I win this hand. Next hand, I'm in the small blind. 254 limpers before me. I'm kidding. Four limpers before me. This table is amazing. I raise 29 from the small blind. They fold to the cutoff, who re-raises all in for 119. Pretty weird play, but I got pocket nines, which is a great hand. Most likely, that's gonna be the last hand of this episode. Do you mean it? I hope the best way hand wins. Come in. Oh my god. Wow. Look at this. That's it. The best hand won. That's nice.
4 hours and 20 minutes of game, winning $145. In the end, I won $150 in 4 hours and 20 minutes of game. Great session. Hold on, because I have something really important to say, and I really hope that what I say helps you in your win rate and in your game. So guys, end of session here. You know one thing that is passing through my head and I never said, and I think today is a good time to say it. It's amazing how steady and consistent is my graph at 1.3 and it's not like now, it's not like last week or last month or last two months, it's like last two, three years, you know, like when I play 1.2 and 1.3, my graph goes up like steady, steady and what makes it generate a little bigger variance is one all in of 200, 100, 300 dollars that I can win or lose but in the end my graph is like this, go up, go up, go up, go up, big pot so I can win a lot or lose $300 and it's been like this for a long time you know and when I play 2-5 the swings are way bigger like down swings and up swings and in the end it just brings me curiosity to understand which game is better for me you know like I'm being really honest to you guys that there are some entries that are so amazing and people playing so bad and so passive and generating so many spots to make money that I really don't know what should I do. Oh, it's noisy. Let me go back. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys because I really feel like this makes sense for you. Uh, there are going to be plenty of 1-3 tables that are better choices for you than 2-5s. And you should definitely be aware of that and check it out, you know. Every time you're at a table 1-3 or 2-5 and you don't feel like it's a good choice for you, just change tables and don't let your ego get in your way, you know. There are definitely going to be some 1-3 tables that are better choices for you. And if they are, do it, you know. You're going to have less variance and you're going to make more profit. So think about that and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and see you next time. What's up everybody? I hope you guys are all happy and healthy during the Christmas time. Uh, we know that the most important thing is our health, so that's what I wish for you and your family. I'm doing this video to make a very special announcement, and the announcement is that I'm doing my first ever meetup game. And as I'm in Brazil and I'm far away from most of you, I decided to do it online on my club on Poker Bros. So if you guys have interest to join me, uh, feel free to click the link in the description below and you will talk straight up to me and I'll answer all of your questions. And I see you there. Thank you all for watching, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to the channel, the mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player, and see you next time.